Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here, and when Alani uh, wrote to me and asked that I give a talk on, on the clinical use of olive oil, I was very excited, because it's one of my more favorite things to speak about. I became interested in olive oil in the mid-1980s, uh, when I had read studies showing that people who used a lot of olive oil were... Yes? A slower? Oh, uh, okay, sorry. I, I knew I was going to have a problem with that. <laughs> I, I was going to say I was going to keep us on time, but I was going to try to talk slowly. Um, I became interested in olive oil in the mid-1980s, um, mainly through the seven country studies. I know that there, people say there were problems with that data, but my interest was that because people who used olive oil were healthy, and at that time, the United States was moving towards low-fat diets. So I, I never... I never agreed with using low-fat diets, and I started to become interested in olive oil. Um, I'm doing research now. I've been doing research for about 10 years. Um, it's been very difficult to try to get funding because it is a fat. In the United States, fat is still not viewed favorably. I keep trying to tell people, but it's olive oil. It's completely different. Um, my work is mainly in cancer and trying to get people to lose weight who have cancer because being overweight is a big risk factor in cancer recurrence. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about my, my work today, but I can tell you that olive oil and rich diets are very effective for weight control and that uh, people choose them over conventional diets, over low fat diets. The other thing I just want to mention before I stop my slides is uh, when Dan Flynn yesterday talked about marketing, um, how important it is to get people um, to look at olive oil differently. Uh, and something that I do is I tell people I, to look at olive oil cost as the price per tablespoon, because then it's not an expensive food. Uh, it's actually very inexpensive. Uh, the other thing I tell them is that uh, most bottles of olive oil are less expensive than many bottle, bottles of wine. And people will drink wine in a meal, but the olive oil will last much longer. So you can look at it different ways. Okay, so to go through, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking about, uh, oh, sorry, just also this front slide, this same, I've used the same front slide for years. I just changed the topics, what goes beyond it, I would, uh, what I discussed, but I've always thought that olive oil was a food that is, is more medicine than food. So to talk about um, some risk factors that chronic disease can improve. Uh, because when we say that uh, diet can change uh, chronic disease, I think the easiest way to explain it is to look at the effect on risk factors. So the ones that I will be talking about for olive oil today are excess oxi oxidation, uh, low density lipoprotein, uh, high density lipoprotein, blood pressure, uh, blood levels of glucose and insulin, and inflammation. These are only meant to be representative. I'm not doing all the studies there are. They are clinical trials, so they involve humans. I also chose studies that um, where the amount of olive oil was specified and the time, the time that they were on the olive oil, for the most part. I do use the Predimed, some of that data. Uh, what I am always interested in trying to find out is what is the least amount of olive oil, shortest amount of time to see an effect? Because I think that's an easy way to see if a patient's going to respond. And just so, um, because there are different units used, just to, um, I use tablespoons, because I work clinically, I tell people table, how many tablespoons of olive oil, but basically uh, around 12 mils or 13 and a half grams is a tablespoon. Okay, so there will be different, uh, th there will be different units measured. So to talk first about oxidation, um, luckily I had a very, we had a very good um, primer on oxidation earlier, so that makes my, my job easier. But excess oxidation will increase disease. We cannot stop oxidation because we breathe oxygen, but uh, you want your levels to be as low as possible. So what extra virgin olive oil can do, uh, because it's mainly a monounsaturated fat, it doesn't oxidize. It also has the highest content of vitamin E that works as an antioxidant, and then it's loaded with phenols that work as antioxidants. So olive oil does not oxidize in your body, and it provides, it's a vehicle to get antioxidants into your body. Compared to vegetable seed oil, so those are like very commonly used in the United States, particularly soybean, olive oil decreases oxidation. Across the board, many studies showing that. I won't present those. The one that I will present on general oxidation, because I think this is interesting, 
is, and what I'm going to do for all the studies is, I have the methods, but I'm only going to talk about, only going to highlight what's important. So this is a high phenol content oil compared to um, a lower one, but still, you know, in the extra virgin olive oil uh, range. And what they found was that the higher, higher phenol content decreased oxidative damage to DNA. So it could have a role in decreasing cancer initiation, cancer starting. Um, what I'm going to talk more about is LDL oxidation. Uh, the focus in the United States, and I think, I think in Europe also, is on uh, LDL itself. But your actual level of LDL is not that important. It's not impor as important as if it's oxidized. So LDL that's oxidized will increase um, heart disease, increase um, arteriosclerosis. But compared to vegetable seed oils, which are high in polyunsaturated fat, um, extra virgin olive oil might not decrease your LDL level. Okay, so if you give someone olive oil as a patient, you might not see a change in their LDL. I will talk about some studies that do have that. But what it will do is it will work on oxidation. So in this study, this is men, okay, kind of a low amount of phenols, but still, you know, extra virgin olive oil. And what they showed was that low level could decrease oxidation. This year alive study, I mentioned a few of these. Uh, you may be familiar with this. They have, um, they had cohorts in Spain and in Italy, but they were also in Germany and then some Scandinavian countries. So this, what, oh, sorry, what they used was, um, a, you know, a fairly low content phenol compared to um, a refined oil. And what they found was that the extra virgin olive oil did in fact decrease the oxidation compared to refined. So it's not the monounsaturated fat. If it was the monounsaturated fat, refined would also do it. So this study, this has, this is a, another Euro Live. This is a higher phenol content compared to the, the moderate one. What this showed was the higher the phenol content, the better the decrease in, in oxidation. And it was only significant for the high phenol content. It was not significant when you did the, tri the comparison against all oils. Uh, only the high one decreased the oxidation. The study in Crete, um, this was interesting because it's only four days, okay? So this looks at a high content versus um, a lower content versus refined. In just four days, uh, as you go up in the phenol content, you had a decrease in LDL oxidation. And this, uh, this level of phenol content decreased oxidation 25%, which is quite, quite good. So to conclude on the oxidation, Extra virgin olive oil will decrease general oxidation. That's certainly been known and shown in many studies. You only need, though, about two tablespoons of at least 150, so not a really high phenol content, to get the decrease in oxidation in as few as three weeks. So that's a really easy response to see in a patient. When you go up to the higher phenol content, you may get the oxidation as, free, as low as four days. Now, there is no data to show how fast the 150 will decrease it, but certainly the study using a high one showed just four days you'll get the decrease in oxidation. So it's a pretty immediate effect. Now specific phenols may be important because you saw with um, some of the same ones in like the 150, 160 range, you, some decreased oxidation, some did not. So it may depend on what specific phenols uh, were in the olive oil. Then to talk about LDL, a low density lipoprotein cholesterol. It is the main carrier of cholesterol in the blood. Uh, what is considered a healthy level, though, is not really clear. Uh, the United States fools around with this every few years. Uh, they relate it to heart disease, but it's not clear. But higher levels are more related to heart disease, but it's not consistent. Just because you have a high level uh, might not mean you'll get heart disease. But this study, uh, this was with older people. And this just used extra virgin olive oil compared to normal diet, only 20 grams a day, so less than two tablespoons. And this showed LDL decreases of a 15%. So I'm going to guess this was a high phenol content, but it was, not, it was not specified. In this study in Spain, uh, they, this again was extra virgin olive oil just versus a control usual diet. Now in this study, the men had decreases of 11%, the women had decreases of 7%, but women had higher baseline. So that was kind of interesting, I thought, because usually the higher baseline means a, could mean a larger response. So in this one, the men were made out better with the extra virgin olive oil. And they were, these were all older people. I mean, these went up to 90-year-old people. 
showing that even older people can benefit if they start to use olive oil. So then two studies that look at the phenol content. Um, this one, this looked at 150 compared to 68, so I guess maybe a virgin olive oil, um, versus a refined olive oil. So three levels. And what this showed was there was no difference in the LDL levels with the 150 or the 68, but the 150 decreased the LDL oxidations, similar to what we saw, I showed in earlier slides. So no change in LDL with this, with this level of phenol. In this one, this is the Eurolive study again, a high level of phenols compared to a refined olive oil. What this one showed was there was a decrease in um, LDL, six milligrams, which is, that's clinically, that's okay. That's for an average number. Uh, but the refined olive oil actually increased the LDL six milligrams. So I thought that was very interesting that they would see an actual increase in using refined olive oil. So to conclude on LDL, um, extra virgin olive oil with a higher phenol content uh, may decrease LDL. Okay, not all studies show that. Uh, the decrease, though, can be seen with about two tablespoons in three weeks. The role of specific phenols is not known. It hasn't been, it hasn't been looked at, uh, but it's probably important. Okay, now HDL. HDL stands for high-density lipoprotein cholesterol. This is related to protecting you from heart disease. Um, your level of HDL is primarily determined by genetics. You can change it with life with diet, but it's really, you're born with a certain HDL that's either very high or not so good. Uh, it's somewhere in between, but I mean it's not as much uh, determined by diet. But certainly changes of 10% are clinically meaningful. So if you have an HDL of 40 and it goes up to 44, uh, that is a clinically meaningful change. We do know that lowering diet fat will decrease the uh, level of HDL, which is where I was working when low-fat low diets um, started in the United States, and that's when I immediately thought these are not going to be good. Um, and compared to a low-fat diet, most fats will increase HDL. Trans fats don't, but I don't really count those because um, they're manufactured foods. But most fats are going to increase HDL. So just adding fat is going to increase your HDL. And some studies show that diets high in polyunsaturated fats will decrease um, HDL. Not all studies show that, but a lot do. Uh, so that's not a good thing. So from the standpoint of studies, this one looked at just extra virgin olive oil compared to habitual diet. And in men, in this study, the men had an increase of about, it's like fifth, going from 56 to over 63. This is a huge increase in HDL. This is a huge increase in HDL. So this showed um, that olive oil will increase HDL in both men and women. Looking at phenol content, this is not a high content again, about 150 compared to 68. And what this showed was with the 150 total phenols, the HDL in these men went from 60 to 64, uh, which is good, not great, but it's good. Uh, but there was no change for the, um, for the other oils, the 68. You needed at least 150 to see an increase. In this Eurolive study, this is a higher level of phenols compared to a, a, a lower level. And what this showed, uh, what's nice about this one is it shows that there's a linear increase in HDL with the increasing uh, phenol content, which is, which is interesting because there's something about the phenols that seem to change HDL or probably change HDL. Now on this one, though, uh, what this showed was this is a high phenol content compared to refined. There was no difference in HDL. But this 366 total phenol, it increased the type of HDL that's uh, protective, the good part. HDL has uh, subparticles, and it also made, it improved the function. It improved HDL's ability to work, uh, so showing that this high phenol content in this study didn't raise the level, but it made it a healthier particle. So conclusions on HDL, extra virgin olive oil increases HDL. Um, this, I remember when I first became interested in HDL and started giving talks, like in the late 1990s, like 98, 99, um, I would have cardiologists stop me in my hospital and say, when I put patients on, HD, on olive oil, their HDL goes up. And I remember that was the first thing I heard clinically. Uh, and it's been shown in many studies. Uh, to my knowledge, olive oil is the only thing that will independently raise HDL. No medicine does that. No other food does that. This seems to be a linear increase in HDL with increasing phenols. 
And the increase can be seen with just about two tablespoons in as little as three weeks. So this two tablespoons in three weeks uh, keeps coming through as being uh, the, the guidelines. Uh, specific phenols may be important because uh, you don't see the same, uh, like in the Eurolive study with the higher numbers, you don't always see the same changes. Okay, so specific phenols may be important, but there is, there is a linear increase. So to talk about, about blood pressure, the effect of olive oil on blood pressure, um, diet will improve blood pressure, okay? We know that um, Americans, I think around the world, I think we have the highest uh, consistently high rates of blood pressure. It's thought to be inevitable that you get high blood pressure, but not in the rest of the world, so obviously it's not. Um, I'm just putting up this study, the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension DASH study, because this received a lot of um, press in the United States in the, this is the late 90s. Uh, what this looked at was that the role of potassium, the mineral that's inside the cell, sodium's outside the cell, this looked at potassium inside the cell. And what this showed was when people ate nine servings, a serving is only a half a cup of vegetables and fruit, you had significant decreases in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but I'm putting these numbers up here because these will come up again in uh, the HDL literature, okay? So these were clinically meaningful uh, to the people who did this. They thought uh, these were good enough to report and, and receive quite a bit of press. So this is the first study that I came across. These are some of the earliest studies I looked at for blood pressure. In this study, they did extra virgin olive oil compared to sunflower oil. Men and women, all hypertensive, and they had, uh, the women got 30 grams a day, the men got 40. It was six months. They didn't measure things till six months. But what they found was that when they were on the extra virgin olive oil, compared to the sunflower oil, they had a decrease in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Diastolic blood pressure seems to be um, harder to decrease. But in this study also, when they were on olive oil, there was a decrease in need for medicines. Eight of those, on the, of the 23, eight did not need their blood pressure medicines when they were on olive oil. In this study in Spain, again, it's just extra virgin compared to sunflower. Uh, these are older people, though, 80s. Uh, extra virgin olive oil decreased systolic, but not diastolic. In this study, this is a U.S. study, um, extra virgin olive oil. So this is up around three tablespoons a day, which is what I use in my studies. And then they compared it to this mixture. I guess this is supposed to be an American mixture of fat. Um, and they, people with three months each fat. And extra virgin olive oil compared to the other fat decreased systolic blood pressure. But again, no change in diastolic. To look at phenol content, this one in, May, uh, in Spain, um, 161, so a lower content, um, but still extra virgin, compared to refined. Extra virgin olive oil lowered systolic, no change in diastolic. Uh, but the difference was, and the systolic was just about what you saw in the DASH study. Okay, so 2.5, so just about what you saw in the DASH study, so very similar to consuming nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. In this one, uh, this is this woman, um, they all had at least higher blood pressures. This is a high phenol content, of course. But what they found was, when you went up to this, with this particular total phenol content, I don't know the specific phenols, it lowered both systolic and diastolic, but these are huge decreases. These are really big average decreases, um, eight and uh, seven points. That's really unusual and very good. This one, this looked at 366 compared to refined. Okay, so big differences there. And what they found was in this study, for some reason, diastolic decreased, but no change in systolic. Now in this study, um, this is, uh, when this study they say that this is not clinically significant, which I agree with, but it's what was found in the DASH study. This is the same diastolic blood pressure. It's actually slightly higher than the, di than the DASH study. So to conclude on blood pressure, about two tablespoons with at least 161 total phenols is going to decrease systolic. It can be seen in as few as three weeks. And higher phenol contents may be needed to decrease diastolic. Okay, you may need to go up to the higher ones. Uh, but daily use of extra virgin olive oil may decrease or even avoid the need for hypertensive medicines. So it could be something that physicians could recommend first before going to, going to medicines. And then also specific phenols are probably important because we don't see the same uh, improvements for the same total phenols. Now blood levels of insulin and glucose, this is where I'm interested in when I do my research, this is what I'm very interested in looking at. 
Um, yes, this is what we think about for type 2 diabetics, high glucose, high insulin. Uh, but high fasting glucose, over 100 and not, oh, not up to diabetic levels, but over 100, which many physicians are fine with, you'll see an increase in breast, prostate, colon, and blood cancers and heart disease. Okay, so high fasting blood glucose is not a good thing. High normal insulin has been related to at least breast, prostate, and colon cancer and heart disease. Uh, so you don't want your insulin to be high. And type 2 diabetics, they have high insulin because um, a type 2 diabetic is someone where their insulin isn't working very well. Their insulin is not sensitive. So um, you, have, you have a decrease in insulin sensitivity. So this is why type 2 diabetics get a lot of heart disease, a lot of cancers. Uh, there's a big, it's a risk for it. So this study, this study was done in Ireland. This is done, this is published in 2000. Um, this one, again, one of the first studies when I really started getting interested in olive oil. These are type 2 diabetics. And they looked at extra virgin olive oil compared to sunflower oil, just two weeks. And what they found when the patients were on extra virgin olive oil, they had significant decreases in fasting glucose. So on olive oil, it was about 137. Uh, and then on the sunflower oil, 153. This, if you saw this in a patient, if you saw this go from a 153 to a 137, this would be very good. So this is not as low as it should be, but it certainly is a nice response. And then insulin went down quite a bit also. Okay, this insulin went down enough that you'd say these were both significant. The same group did a follow-up study looking at insulin sensitivity. So that what that's saying is uh, you, you need a certain amount of insulin to lower blood glucose. The less insulin you need, the better. So in this study, again, they took type 2 diabetics. Unfortunately, this was not random order, okay? But what they did was they had them all on vegetable oil diets and then all on extra virgin olive oil diets, and they didn't give the amount, okay? So this is not what I typically use, but I like this study uh, because what it showed was uh, when they looked at fat cells, that olive oil made insulin work better, okay? So it's making insulin work better, so that's really good. Uh, that could have implications in cancer, which is, I say, where I work. I'm very interested in trying to get insulin down in my cancer patients. This one, this is 25. Oh, th I like this study because um, many of my patients in my protocols will say to me, I'll, I like them to put the olive oil as part of the diet, but they'll say, can I just drink it? And I'll say, well, you could, but I really prefer that you put it into your meal. And I point to this study because this study had just 25 grams of olive oil. In one scenario, they added it to the meal. The other scenario, they cooked it into the meal. And there's only one meal. But what they showed was, oh, I'm sorry, these were obese women and lean women. So no changes for the lean women, okay? But lean people uh, typically don't have insulin insensitivity. But in the obese women, there was no difference in the blood glucose. Okay? The preparation did not change that, but the preparation did change the insulin response. Cooking food in into um, olive oil made for the person to need less insulin for the same level of glucose. And that's a really good thing to have. Okay, so cooking your food into olive oil can be good. I know it's not so good for the oil, for the phenols, but um, it is good for your health. So for glucose and insulin, daily use of extra virgin olive oil is going to decrease glucose and insulin. I'm working now in this area with low-income people, and I'm showing this pretty consistently that this will happen. Um, the decreases in glucose and insulin are seen with a little more than two, three, I'm sorry, two tablespoons in as little as two weeks, so very quick response. Extra virgin olive oil is probably also going to make your insulin work better, increase the insulin sensitivity. And cooking food into olive oil may be the key or may be helpful in insulin sensitivity. Uh, but the role of total or specific phenols has not been tested. So this is an area that I think that's pretty ripe for testing. Uh, and if you can control diabetes, you're going to control a whole lot of diseases, okay? Because it's just, it's what's making, it's one of the main reasons healthcare is becoming so expensive. It's just a really expensive disease. And then last, uh, inflammation. Inflammation is the response to disease. Uh, high levels are not healthy. And the things that you can measure are C-reactive protein, IL-6, there are other ones, but these are, are commonly done. In this study in Spain, it looked at extra virgin olive oil compared to a refined olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil decreased two markers of inflammation. In this study, on the Predimed ones, um, even though the amount is not specified, they were in this group using all extra virgin olive oil versus nuts versus lower fat. 
And what they found in the extra virgin olive oil group, there were decreases in several markers of inflammation. Okay, so showing that olive oil can decrease inflammation. And then this is the high content compared to refined. Uh, these are women with high blood pressure. These are the women that I spoke about earlier. What they found was the high, um, the high level of total phenols decreased C-reactive protein almost two points, which is, um, which is impressive. I mean, that's, that's a good re reduction in, in C-reactive protein. It was only eight weeks. Uh, this study in Spain, um, this one, this is a Mediterranean diet plus a high phenol content compared to Mediterranean diet with a lower phenol content versus usual diet. They gave them a whole bunch of olive oil. Um, and what they found was, this was interesting because they found that the extra virgin olive oil worked at the genetic level. It decreases the, decreases the genes that would, would lead to inflammation. So it decreased all these uh, genes, which is really uh, interesting. It's the only study I, I'm aware of this looking at mechanisms. So in conclusions on inflammation, um, daily use of extra virgin olive oil seems to decrease inflammation. The mechanism may be at the genetic level, which is pretty exciting. Uh, decreases in the markers can be seen in as few as three weeks. And specific phenols, of course, um, oleocanthal is pro probably going to be important. Um, so those are all the studies that I'm presenting, um, but what I have tried to say when I've presented this to um, other researchers in the U.S. and in physicians, I think it would be very, very helpful going forward if people in there, when they use extra virgin olive oil, to specify total phenols, to specify any phenols they know, any composition, specify varietal, specify country, any information that you can give people, because I think it will help us make a uh, better sense of the literature. But it certainly, I think it is very impressive what extra virgin olive oil can do from the, the, all the different biomarkers that we have for disease and explains why extra virgin olive oil is related to decreasing so many chronic diseases. Thank you. <laughs>